Hi, this is Brian London of Gold Newsletter, and this is your Market One Minute. I'm talking here with the uh, with Doug Casey, who needs no introduction. Doug is uh, 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 an icon in the hard money and libertarian movements. And Doug, you're here at the New Orleans Investment Conference. We're so glad to welcome you back. You're a long-term fixture here, and and a big draw for our crowd. How are you enjoying things so far? Well, as far as conferences go, Brian, the original is usually the greatest, and this place is the original conference, so I love coming back here every year. But it's interesting, because this year, we are at a major bottom in yeah. the resource market, and um, I like going to conferences like this just to get the psychological gauge of the mm -hmm. crowd out there. So, unless we go into a catastrophic deflation, such as my friend Bob Prechter talks about, I think that we're looking for a uh, huge bull market building in the resource stocks. It's cyclical, and I think we're at the bottom. And we're about the third year of this decline, and I have to say, I've seen from the crowd a bit more interest, a bit more excitement. It's impossible to predict when the, the next upswing will actually come, but you do have to figure that we're, we're right about the bottom here and, and kind of bouncing along. Yeah. Well, the people that have come to this conference are veterans. They've been around the block a few times and they're shrewd enough to realize that this is a major cyclical bottom we're at now. Now, I, you mentioned uh, Bob Krecker predicting a deflation. I, I wasn't able to, to hear the end of, uh, of Bob's talk, but it seems to me a deflation, that's the big worry now in, in of course, Japan and Europe. Uh, but you know, Jim used to, Jim Blanchard used to tell me years and years ago that, that central bank, bankers, above all, will not allow a deflation. They will just print and print and print to whatever means necessary to prevent a deflation. Now, what's your view on that? Uh, and he's absolutely right. The problem is, is that the central banks have been printing and printing in the form of debt, credit in other words, and credit and debt has to be serviced, and if people can't service it because the economy slows down enough, it's defaulted on. And when a billion dollar bond is defaulted on, that's a billion dollars of purchasing power that dies and goes to money heaven, and that's the danger of deflation. And of course, the biggest buyer of debt these days is the government itself. And the argument from some is that that debt's uh, benign because we owe it to ourselves, we can just forgive it. That's yeah. helicopter money. Of course, and that's nonsense. We don't owe it to ourselves. Some people in the country owe it to some other people in the country. So it's a, that's a, a flawed statement. Anyway, it's not true we owe it to ourselves. We owe it to the Chinese uh, more than anybody else today. But, you know, I was talking with Bob Prechter just before mm -hmm. I came over here to talk with you. And the two of us shouldn't talk to each other because really? we out gloom and doom each other. I mean, <laughs> I think what we're going into, and Bob agrees, is going to be the biggest upset, the biggest upheaval since the Industrial Revolution, or if you wish, the French Revolution. And when things really start coming on glued, and I think that they will, it's been inevitable for a long time, but now it's imminent. Uh, you could have the Jacobins and things that are worse than that in the years to come. And the militarization of the police, uh, so many. I'm, I'm glad to see that there's been at least some blowback on that lately. Oh, this has been going on for right. 20 years, yeah. but the trend has not only been in motion, but it's accelerating at this point. And I just don't know when the average whip dog out there in America will get away from his television set and eating junk food and recognize what's happened to this country. Because I don't even call it America anymore, because America was a fantastic idea. But now this is just the United States, another nation state with a, a very toxic government in Washington. Aren't you at least a bit heartened that the libertarian movement has gotten some uh, rejuvenation recently and with Ron Paul's uh, uh, campaign for president, it seems like they, he, he kind of uh, awakened uh, our, uh, a certain segment of America and a younger segment of America to the, the libertarian ideal. Uh, you're right, Brian. It's not all gloom and doom. I mean. 
a couple generations ago, a generation ago, people didn't even, hadn't even heard the word libertarian. Right. Now people talk about it. But uh, we're kind of a little sub-trend, but I'm afraid the major trend of the vast majority of people is still very negative. So I don't want to sound too gloom and doomy, but um, I think we're going into very tough times. What do you see or do you even uh, venture to have a prediction for the near future as far as the markets, uh, the precious metals, mining stocks? I think that as we speak, we're at the crest of probably the biggest bubble in world history in bonds and interest rates. And this is really serious because the bond market is much bigger than the stock market. And as a consequence of that, the stock market is also in bubble territory. And with interest rates as low as they are and various government policies, the real estate market is about to take, uh, uh, go into another bloodbath. Uh, it's very, very serious. Um, and it's very hard to say what people should do. I mean, I continue to buy gold, frankly, because it's the only financial asset that's not simultaneously somebody else's liability. And gold is not at giveaway levels anymore, like it was as recently as 2001, 2002. But that said, it's still something that you can hold that won't dry up and blow away like dollars eventually will. And I, and I think a lot of uh, mainstream investors and, and even investors who buy gold due to geopolitical troubles, et cetera, don't really appreciate the role of gold as a, uh, a, a tool to protect them from government mismanagement of the currency and the economy and, and not just something that's to be speculated in in case there's a geopolitical hotspot here. It's, it's money. I agree. I don't view gold as a speculation and I think that within the next generation, it's going to be reinstituted as actual, I know this sounds outrageous, but it's going to be reinstituted as actual money uh, as it was before 1933, where a gold coin in your pocket is actually accepted at a store. I, I think people don't realize either how easily that could be accomplished. Ron Paul introduced the, the legislation into Congress where gold could, is legal for gold to circulate alongside the dollar as currency and of course that's the end game once that happens then then you know everyone will prefer to use gold well, that's right so we have cause for optimism after we go through the meat grinder which we're <laughs> heading into now coming out the other side i mean there's more scientists and engineers alive today than have ever lived in all of history put together positive the average guy if he's not on welfare tries to produce more than he consumes positive so it's not all gloom and doom. Well, let's end on that positive note. Thank you, Doug. While we have a positive note from you, we'll take it and, take it and run with yeah, it's it. Great Thanks, Doug. Good talking to you, Brian. Good talking to you.